Which fans did the internet between some of us you on back? Star Trek official Star Trek review, yes. Um, it's been a while because I finally got my box for you and my reliance came this morning. Now I'm just waiting for my uh, USS, USS um, Thunderchild and my Borg, Borg Cube and the Jemadar warship. So, yeah. But anyway. Onto this, I'm still, oh, and my Deep Space Nine. Still haven't got my Deep Space Nine yet. But anyway, um, yeah. So, as per the title page, it's going to be my Borg Sphere and Issue 10 review. Yes, so Issue 10 is the Borg Sphere. Um, we get, the specifications are affiliation Borg Collective, obviously. Uh, type long-range tactical vessel. Um, some have been used as long-range tactical vessels. Um, but some use the scout ships as well. Uh, active 24th century, diameter is 600 meters. That varies depending on which episode. Um, like for the one in first contact, um, it's found out to be 300 meters in diameter because they found it in the episode of Enterprise called Regeneration. They found the damaged, you know, d debris, and they estimate that the entire circumference is um, a perfect sphere is 300 degrees. 300 meters, um, sorry, in diameter. Crew 11,000, top speed, transwarp capable, weapon retractor beams, cutting beams, and which well, says projectile missiles, but I think it's plasma torpedoes. Um, again, we get the, you know, Borg Sphere, the history of the Borg Sphere, where it comes from, and tactical abilities and defend, uh, adaptive defenses. Um, and again, you get some more screenshots of uh, various episodes of Voyager where it featured, and of course the opening from First Contact. Um, we get, ah, this is quite a cool little section, assimilation, it tells you about the assimilation process. Um, yeah, um, from the injection from the, right from the tubules to actually becoming a Borg. And ladies and gentlemen, hey, it's not pleasant. Yeah, and it goes into more detail on this, this page there, shows you that is quite horrific from that first contact. Where they put the eyepiece on there. Um, yeah, so various, various, uh, like I say, explaining the assimilation uh, process and Borg implants and the like. Um, designing the Borg sphere, it's always my favourite section, I love this section. Um, it was always envisioned as a sphere because, you know, the, the series had a cube and so they went with a sphere as well. Um, yeah, it shows you different design specifications, like from one that's very much like a cube, but then they went from a more streamlined version to the you know actual version that they, they finally chose. And then you've got the you know a publicity shot from the sphere there. Um, and a little bit of history on design of the Borg Queen as well, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, yeah, for the very first sort of. How she's going to look like with like spike coming out of her hair, um, to you know the process of uh, you know the head coming down from the from the ceiling and connected with the body, which is pretty one of my favourite sequences in Star Trek. Um, again, explaining the um, you know movie magic sort of stuff there. Um, and we get to the on-screen bar, which is the last bit. We get um, first appearance, Star Trek First Contact, TV appearances in Star Trek Voyager, um, and of course, well, a damaged one, well, a debris field in Enterprise as well. Um, key appearances, First Contact and Star Trek Dark Frontier. Um, it was designed by John Eves, who also designed the Gemini Warship, which is pretty fucking cool. So, yeah. On to the... Onto the model, it's what onto the model itself. There you are, box sphere. Very nice, very nicely detailed, very intricately detailed. Looks exactly like it does on on Star Trek Voyager, um, because the Voyager versions were slightly different to the first contact versions. Um, bearing case in point, um, you've got on the front cover there. You've that's the first contact. Uh, that's the Voyager version, and in where is it? That. That one's the first contact version. So you can see there's a there's a notable difference. I mean that's CG and that's an actual built model. So you know, hey that's you know, that's 
it's just one of those things. It's one of those things. So yeah, it's nicely detailed there. I like the fact that they've painted some sections in green, sort of like indentations in green, which would, you know, kind of would be uh, the parts on the board sphere that would be a little green anyway. And that's pretty much it, really. It's just a sphere. <laughs> but very nice, I like it. Um, it comes with a display stand. Um, it comes with two mounting ports on this. They've said that the ships don't come with mounting ports, but in Voyager, you see these, which is like the uh, tractor beam housing, and when they assimilate a vessel, that's where it goes in. Um, and they've incorporated that into the stand. So you get the stand, and, and of course, it comes with this regular stand with um, bog sphere on the bottom there, and you connect it thusly. And, he's, and it stays quite nicely. And it, you know, it's on its stand. It's pretty cool. Um, that's all that can be said really about the box fit. I like it. I think it's one, it's very nicely detailed. And it's nice to get an alien ship for a change. The last alien ship was the Klingon Battle Cruiser. Oh, I've got to, got to rearrange my, my model shelf because it's not going to go on there. Yeah, the last alien ship was a Klingon Battle Cruiser. So it's nice to get a few more alien ships. Don't get me wrong, I'm loving the Starfleet ships, but just a bit of variety, you know. So, yeah, that was just a quick review, very quick, uh, can't talk, a quick review of the Borg Sphere. So, join me next time for the USS Reliance. And uh, in the words of the Borg, you will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. <laughs>